Welcome back to Uncover Your Magic. Today's episode is going to be so much fun because my guest speaks my language, but has tools for us to add to our toolkit so we can live an even more magical life. Since having this podcast, I have met some incredible people with such fascinating stories. Each guest has given me a different perspective on life and how to take my life to a higher level. I'm always on a journey to improve and grow and find ways to make life that much better every single day. Watching my students in Raising Confidence uncover their magic and see how powerful they are has been one of the biggest gifts for me this past year. Now that I am teaching the Magic Path course to adults, it has opened a door that is so incredible to witness these powerful women discover who they truly are after years of living with limiting beliefs and so much negative self-talk. The most powerful experience is when I see a shift in the way they view who they truly are and beginning begin seeing themselves as a being of pure love and source energy. Then they start living in a knowing and have an awareness that they can be, do, or have anything. And life begins to be so much fun and take on a whole new meaning. When you learn these mindset tools, you begin to live life with so much more gratitude and know everything in your life is for you. I am getting ready to start my next raising confidence course for teens and the magic path for adults. If you or you know anyone who would be interested in learning my magical tools to take their life to the next level, please pass on my website, ashleygonner.com, or just email me at ashleygonner at gmail.com. The eight weeks we spend together one-on-one is pure magic. Each one of us is on our own journey of self-discovery and learning tools to ignite your life to the next level and see life in a new way is my passion. It is my passion for everyone who connects with me. I look forward to hearing from you. So let's get this interview started. Let me introduce you to Judith Joy. Judith is an author, transformational teacher, inspirational speaker, dream creation coach, and healer whose mission is to help people manifest their dreams and shift their energy to create the life they choose. She began studying energy healing and consciousness transformation after her own experience with recurring debilitating headaches. Her headaches started as a youth and she tried all the conventional methods of typical Western medicine looking for relief. After years of getting no results, she began searching, researching alternative methods, which is when she finally found a path to ease her suffering. This awareness led her to 20 years of study and research of how the heart and mind work together. As many who teach spiritual, intuitive energy consciousness, she too has had her share of trauma and drama, which led her to find a way to change her reality. I'm so excited for you to meet Judith. So without further ado, please welcome Judith Joy to the show. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. It's so fun to meet people that are like-minded, speak the same languages and, you know, are on a journey to empower people so they can see life in the way we see life and how we've gone on our journey in, you know, always wanting to grow and learn and find those magic things, tools to add to our tool chest and, um, you know, live the, this magical life that we, that everyone can live and get rid of our self-limiting beliefs and all the things that, you know, I I always teach in my classes and I know you do in yours, but I want you to uncover your magic and explain and add things to our, um, toolbox. But I want to understand because you have two books that you've written that I'm so intrigued by. The first one is surviving your teenager and being happy anyway. And that's right down my alley (laughs) and dear future lover, bring your boyfriend to life. And until you know, my story, I, I created my husband and I cannot wait to hear the, the basis of that book. 
So let's start with you. Just tell me your, where you go back, the magic moments, the places that you found that you had the light bulb go off or you, you tell me. Um, I think I always had the skill. I just didn't know I had it. Right. And I was going along life and, you know, think certain things worked and certain things didn't. And then I realized I had headaches. Hmm. I, I was so cut off that I didn't even realize I had headaches. And after I got married the first time, my then husband said, do you realize that you have headaches. And so we started this whole journey and I went to diamond headache or no, first off, I went to Mayo and they said, you have headaches, take Excedrin. <laughs> and then I went to diamond headache clinic and they said, here, have some drugs. Mm -hmm. And then I went to a Catholic hospital in Indiana and they said, put your husband before yourself. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I thought they were joking. And so I asked one of the nurses and they she said, oh no, he's serious. Oh, okay. It's he, of course. It's he. And I was like, oh. okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> oh, funny. Huh? And I jumped over to the alternative side and I was going to a chiropractor because I was in a dance class and all the ladies in the class were like, Hey, this guy's great. So I'm going to him. He's wonderful. He's sharing an office with another chiropractor and this other chiropractor had this thing going on and I kept looking going, well, what's going on? What are they doing over there? I'm curious what's going on. So curiosity is huge. Right. And eventually I made an appointment with her and she said, there's this guy in the back. He's tapping on heads and doing something. I don't know what it is, but he, he's getting results. And I'm like, okay, I'll try. <laughs> well, that was 22 years ago. Um, we're colleagues now. Oh, neat. And I'm still going to the same practice. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You know, just tune ups. And when I went to Dr. Jayner, I would ask him questions and he'd say, well, you know, this is the answer or read this book or talk to this person or take this class. And he just sort of led me the whole way. And so I started doing energy healing because that's what made sense to me. Right. And then it morphed into consciousness transformation. Hmm. And then I realized, wow, they're the same thing. Energy healing is applied to the body and consciousness transformation is applied to life. Right. And I'm like, oh, he, somewhere in here is the answer of why the things that it, in my life that worked, worked. Right. Right. <laughs> and so I started researching that and I'm like, whoa, no wonder this worked. No wonder that didn't work. And it, I narrowed it down. I'm really good at taking a complicated idea and bringing it down to the basics. Right. And I developed this four step process and each step has so much meat in it, mm -hmm. but if you just remember the four steps, then it's like. Oh, okay. The four steps to do what? To uh, achieve, to create, a life. To, create to create a life, to create a dream, to create whatever it is you want to create. If you okay, want to go, tell me. Okay. First, <laughs> be high vibe. This is your secret sauce. High vibe. Yes. Yeah. All Another. about vibration. Yeah. Yeah. And then the second is imagine your dream. So most people just imagine their dream and it's like, oh, I'm seeing me standing on a stage and blah, 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 whatever. And that's good. And that's a start. Now let's look underneath that. And what is it that you really want by standing on that stage? And what's your true desire? Mm -hmm. And then you start looking at that and you start playing with it and you massage it out and you get down to some type of body sensation that you're really going for. You know, like you can say happy, but then how do you know, how does your body know you're happy? Mm -hmm. And then you start massaging that and you come like, oh, well, what I really want. And so now you've got the deep desire and that's what you ask the universe for. This way, 
the universe can bring you multiple ways that you can fulfill this desire. And by the way, your dream is one of those ways. It's not the only way. Right. I love that. And then the next step is to align yourself with that desire. So anything that gets in the way, you got to clear. If you've got a thought that doesn't work for you anymore, out. If you've got a new rule that you can make up, in. If <laughs> you've got um, people in your life that don't work for you and are not supportive, out. And it, you just go back and forth. And this is where a lot of the work is. You know, once you know what your true desire is, the majority of the time you're going to spend either in high vibe and then when you dip out of high vibe, it's an indication that you've got something going on in the aligning phase. Right. It does go, let's start with vibration. I want to go a little deeper because I'm all about vibration. And I, I know you are too, because if I would learn, I've learned uh, Judith's story, it's usually get in high vibe. And I'm like, yes, that's all I, that, that's my focus. I get up at morning routine, all the things. But when you explain somebody how important your vibration is and, you know, it, when they're like not used to, they have negative thoughts, they're, you know, they're not getting up and having their gratitude practice and all the things that I think are part of getting yourself and how important it is in the morning for sure. And understanding that, what are you, what are you teaching? Okay. First off, doing it in the morning is setting your tone for the day, right? You don't have to do it just in the morning. It eventually becomes a practice that you do all day long. Right. And vibration, if you look at uh, the consciousness scale that David Hawkins did in power versus force, mm -hmm. you go from zero to a thousand. The lower vibes, the ones closer to zero, um, those are things like depression, anxiety, um, apathy, grief, shame, blame, you know, those types of things. Now think about when you are depressed and you're say, sitting on the couch and you're sitting there and it's like, oh, I guess I can move. Oh, it takes a whole lot of effort to do very little. Right. And you're in a forced reality. You're forcing yourself to do something. You move up from there and you get to anger. While anger is still technically a lower vibe, you do have more energy available to get something done. Because when you're angry, you're like, I'm going to do something and this isn't right and I can do this and you move there. Now move up a little bit more and you're at pride, which is where the Marines are and they can get a lot done. Mm -hmm. Now, the sweet spot is when you move up just a little bit more and you actually take responsibility for everything in your life, everything that's coming at you and everything that's going out. Once you do that, then you can look at being compassionate and kind and loving and just these feelings of gratitude just coming out of you. And mm -hmm. it takes almost no effort to get anything done. Right. It becomes a muscle. I always say that, like, once you figure out how to keep your vibe high and you're like living this dream life of, you know, you created your vibration and now you're like, Whoa, this is amazing. That's now, just like, that's when I say the magic happens. Oh, it does. And it really does happen. But if you have negative thoughts while you're in there, you're also creating those negative thoughts. Right. So you very careful what you're thinking about and what you're wish wishing for. Right. But when you're in high vibe, it can literally be seconds until you create something. Mm -hmm. I was in a meeting and it was going on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And I'm like, okay, I am so tired. I am done. And I made this little energy ball of, I am done, put it in my hand under the table and just spun it out <laughs> and then just sat back within like 30 seconds, maybe a minute, the guy who was talking all of a sudden stopped and said, I think I'm done. 
<laughs> I love that. <laughs> so fun. I was shocked that it worked so fast. Oh, I love it. What, um, so when you're, when you're teaching, so you explain this, I know I've, I've read that book power versus force. And I remember, you know, you thinking now at my age and at our age, and now what we've learned, you know, you, you teach people, you know, here's zero and here's a hundred or is it a hundred or a thousand? A thousand. A thousand. And, um, you're, you know, you go through the different, you know, this is this, this is anger, this is pride. And so here, this person's living in the lowest of low and you're, you're going to say, oh, get up here. Well, actually, it's an unrealistic, some people can do it, but personally, I think it's unrealistic to go, I'm depressed. I'm happy. You can set the intention to be happy and to be joy and to be at peace. But maybe this depression for today, that looks like I'm gonna take a shower. And then the next day, I'm gonna put some makeup on. Right, like and I always it, say like the next best feeling thought, like the next best, yes, yes I always think of like Abraham Hicks. Up. Right. Now, what happens is most people stay within a little bit of their set point. Right. So if you're way down the scale, you might move up and down, but you're going to stay basically the same spot. However, once you set the intention to move up and you know where you're going, now you've got a way to get there. Right. So it is possible that your highest point before is now your lowest point that you have. Yes. I love that. And I see it come true to these, to my clients. And, you know, you think of all the little tools that, you know, that I like the gratitude, um, you know, the let's put on a song that you love, <laughs> you know, I mean, meditate or, you know, do go out and exercise, go nature, you know, be part of, be one with the universe, you know, go out and be in awe of things like, like say, thank you, God, and look around and think, look at what I have, you know, all the gratitude. I mean, yeah. I say to my girls, like gratitude takes, it's like 540 megahertz. It's like the highest form of energy that you get. So your vibration is so at the peak with that gratitude. So once you finish that, you're like, whoa. And then you're, then the, I always say the blinders come off and you're seeing all these things that have always been there. But now, because you're at the highest vibration, you're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. You know, right. Oh, yeah. yeah but my, my third child um, had depression and anxiety as a child and through high school and through college. And finally she got to 21 and she said, mom, all this stuff that we're doing isn't working. Teach me what you do. I'm like, Oh, music to mother's ears. <laughs> right. No kidding. So the first thing I taught her was gratitude. Oh, good. And she would literally sit outside at night and do a half hour of gratitude. I'm grateful for electricity. I'm grateful for indoor plumbing. I'm grateful for a house to live in. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Just listing it. Mm -hmm. Then she starts feeling it. Yep. She's 32 now. One of the happiest people I know. Things just click into place for her. Mm -hmm. And it's like so magical. Well, in February... Um, I actually fell in the bathtub at a hotel oh boy. and she was with me. So I called her and she immediately came over and did energy on me, but she doesn't like to drive. And I'm like, well, you are driving. <laughs> <laughs> so she gets in my car driving around an unfamiliar city. We do what we have to do. She drives all the way back to where we're from and that was like three hours on a highway. She especially doesn't like to drive the highway, but I got to see how she does gratitude now. Oh, cool. Whoa, that merge was so fantastic. Thank you, Divine. That was great. Whoa, he put his turn signal on. Thank you, Divine. That was wonderful. Oh, and oh my goodness, there's so much space between cars. Thank you, Divine. That's wonderful. And we're listening to Taylor Swift. Thank you, Divine. Oh my goodness, I love listening to her. And it's a constant conversation. 
Oh, that's so cool. I love that. She is right up my alley. I love doing my girls. We are in the car and it's constant too, but I just know the shift. And when I see their friends that come over and they don't have that in their life, Yes. And it's just such a different energy vibration, <laughs> but, um, I show, I, I, I want to show them like, look, you know, look how we start our day. Look what we're focused on in the car when we're driving places and what we see and how it's because we we're so conscious and focused on creating this vibration and an energy so we can attract these beautiful things and, you know, have this magical life, but I want you to explain. So go to the, finish the four, because okay, I want, I need you one. to go into, cause I don't even know about your family, why you wrote this book about surviving your teenagers. I, I need to go there. So finish the four. And then okay, I want to go high into- five. Imagine your dream, um, align with the dream and take inspired action. Yes. Uh, take an action. I'm all about that. But it's inspired. Action. Yes. It's not just what you should be doing. Right. It's that intuitive hit that comes in that says, hey, go down to Joe's diner and have a cup of coffee. Right. And then you go. And oh, by the way, the man sitting next to you gives you the next clue on your path. Yes. That's the magic. It's that inspired action. And it's almost like so what I am taking a course right now. And we, it's all about, um, self-discovery, self-limiting beliefs, you know, learning to understand who we truly are is Mm -hmm. love and, um, love, but, um, you know, listening to inspired action when people think that's why I love that you say that because it's those things, wait, I should go to that gas station, you know? And then it's like, well, that's what it's telling me I'm going. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. But I, you know, I had a magical story. This is, I'm not going to go to the length of it, but I had a woman on my show. Her name's Suzanne Giesman. You should listen to that episode. You would love it. She has YouTube videos and they're short. And I, you know, I was like, oh, I've had 15 minutes of my walk left. And I saw, oh, hit that YouTube video. This happened a couple of days ago. So it's fresh on my mind and it's super magical. And I said, I thought, oh my gosh, about Archangel Michael. I didn't, you know, it's like such a cool story. I thought I'm going to share it. So I'm sharing it with my mom and a couple of friends, you know, who, whatever's in my, inspired to me to send to text, right? right? Not everybody. And then um, I go along with my day and I had gone, to, had scheduled this um, facial thing at this dermatologist far away. And I don't know why I was going. And I thought, shoot, you know, I really don't why am I driving all this way? There's plenty of places I could have gone, you know, two minutes from my house, but I'm driving and I get there and I noticed this woman, she greeted me and she had this necklace and I, you know, people, a lot of people wear necklaces that have meaning, you know, and I could tell it probably did. So I walk in and she's telling me a story about her life and how it like, she turned, uh, you know, all the, she almost committed suicide. Her boyfriend broke up with her. And she said, one day I laid in bed for three months. And the one day I woke up and I thought, I'm going to pray to Archangel Michael. And I go, what? Like who? She's like, yeah, that's who's on my necklace. He's changed my life. And I said, if you could see what I've done today, it's all been about <laughs> Archangel Michael. And then I go to this like three, 30 minutes away place. Here she is with this beautiful Archangel Michael necklace on. She's it's transformed her life. And we just are kind of crying at each other going, what does this mean? Like we are so connected. It's like we were, you were drawing me to you. And now she's like, I go, gosh, we're like, we're connected. We're like soul sisters. You know, but when you see that, you know, when you see those, those times where you had that inspired action, you don't know why just do it because those are it. one reason, but it's actually another. Exactly. And that was the best example. I thought I I showed her the YouTube video because the title says Archangel Michael is real. (laughs) And I thought, whoa, what a day. And it went on, but I just love inspire. I'd like it when people understand inspired action, isn't just saying, oh, I'm going to you know, go do something. It's listening and going, oh, I'm just going to, that's telling me to go to that coffee shop. You know, I I must be, and I got to go there. And you just don't know where those lead. And to when you have your vibe high and you're like, you know, looking around and you're waiting for the magic, it's always there. You're ready to receive it. Yes. You're in the receiving mode. (laughs) Yes. If you're low vibe, you're not really ready to receive it. Right. Okay. Keep going. What's the, so that's getting in, into alignment and then taking inspired action is the last right. one. Okay. But you have to be willing to receive and you have to prepare yourself to receive. Okay. 
And how are you preparing yourself to receive? You took inspired action because you got a podcast idea, right? You saw a class that was interesting. You took action and took the class, right? And then you had no idea why, but now you've got this whole career in podcasting, right? It was just following the little breadcrumbs along the way. And you were willing to open yourself up and say, yes, I'm willing to receive. Yes. And not question it. I didn't ever, I just knew. And I look back now going, gosh, I really, I really did that. (laughs) You know, you in life, you know, I'm 52. And I think of the things that, you know, I've done in my life where I just did it. And I just didn't question it. I just said, I just trust. I always say trust and surrender and go and, you know, kick the door. You know, Tony Robbins always says, you know, just do it, kick the door. What are you waiting for? But the thing is, so many times we hear that little voice says, take the class or whatever. And we're like, nah, why do I have to do that? That doesn't make sense. Drop all of that. Right. One time I was in the back hall and it was gorgeous out, sunshine, great. And I had this little voice that said, take an umbrella. I'm like, what? It is gorgeous out. I don't need to take an umbrella. Well, by the end of the day, it was raining and I should have taken the umbrella. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, I know. It, but the, the, just to think how many people ignore that and miss those magic, magical moments and the stories that you can share by saying, I took this inspired action. Someone told me in my little head to do this podcast. So I did. I didn't know why. I just kept going. And I took those little, you know, I always say the yellow brick road, I kept going, followed the breadcrumbs and then here it is. But, you know, I don't like, and I also say, don't live with what ifs, you know, let's live in, in doing, you got to take do the what ifs on the positive high vibe side. Yes. Yes. Oh, I love the what ifs on the positive. Yes. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) But my whole book, uh, dear future lover. Yes. It was following all these little breadcrumbs. I saw an article that someone said, write a journal to your future, whatever that future is. Okay. So I wrote it to my future husband. And so that's where the dear future lover comes in. And I'm writing this journal. It's which for me was a series of letters. Okay. And you're writing to your future husband, right? Or I don't know him, but I'm saying I'm pretending as if I already know him. Oh, I love it. And I'm writing to him, well, this happened during the day and, you know, my kids did this or said that, or how's it going in your life right now? And it, whatever. Cute. But I had all these things going on and then put the journal away. And then I get, um, someone told me about an organization that they wanted me to join. And I'm like, no, 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 I don't want to join that organization. It's horrible, uh, whatever. Well, eventually there was somebody in the organization that I wanted to get class from. And in order to take the class, I had to join the organization. So I'm like, fine. fine. As long as I've joined it, I may as well go on the cruise that they have. So I go on this cruise and I actually did two back-to-back cruises. The first one, Dr. Janer was with me, uh, the guy with the tapping on the head. Right. And he narrowed down so far that it's like, do you want to live? And I'm like, yes. Do you want to live? Yeah. And I'm like, yes, I do. And things switched for me. Fast forward a couple of days to the next cruise. My husband walks on. Huh. And he sat down at the table with us. And I'm like, oh, he's interesting. And I moved a chair over. And we have been together ever since we've talked every single day for nine and a half years. Oh my gosh. The the second night, um, I had dinner with a different group of people, joined his group afterwards. And I was sitting on one side of the table. He was sitting across from me and some crazy lady was sitting in between us. And I'm like, (laughs) that is not going to work for me. Oh, and I picked up my chair and moved it next to him. Now, my personality is not that at all. 
Oh, not oh. that old generally. Oh, funny. <laughs> but I had the intuitive hit that I had to move my chair. Right. Huh. So wait, when when the doctor, the chiropractor, your friend said, do you want to live? Why? Why that? He just, he asks a lot of questions. And that's how we clear the energy. We're asking questions, asking questions. And you get down to intuition. And I'm like, oh, I can see where I'm putting out that energy. Mm -hmm. But But you don't want to (laughs) live? I can see where I put out the energy that I don't want to live. Oh, okay. But then I made the choice of, oh, yes, I do. Right. And I've turned it around and I'm like, you can turn in an instant. Right. Oh, I love that. Yes. Okay. So your book, Dear Future Lover. So it's all it is, is you writing letters to, are you teaching people how to do it? Or it's all the letters that you wrote? Um, it's a com- couple things. Each chapter begins with a principle for the law of attraction. Oh, neat. And then the letter supports that principle. Okay. And then after that is, how did that letter actually show up in my life? For example, there was one letter when I said, I am not into politics. I don't know if you are. And I'm just, you know, writing, whatever. Right. It showed up. Politics is his soap opera. He loves it. <laughs> like, oh, I never should have written that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay. So, oh, fun. I have so many friends that I'm going to send this book to. <laughs> um, you know, it's like you can finding... do it not just for your husband yeah. or your wife, or you can do it for a new job. I had someone write one letter and then got her dream job. Yes. I'm all about that. I love doing that. Yeah. I love, I, I call it like scripting kind of, you know, like, a, but I like thinking, yeah. Thinking of as, as a letter, like you're really writing it to the, to the person, or if you're trying to, you know, find a husband, um, or a job, but or um, a house, yeah. Or, or anything, a, a car. car. Yeah. Um, oh, that's cute. So you found your husband on the cruise you shifted your energy before and decided you wanted to live. And you realize that when you realize that you were sitting next to him, you're, you're like, he seems interesting. I need to find, I need to meet him. Like, did you just, you just knew. It, I just knew it. Right. And um, he had a stateroom and Dr. Janer was showing a medical device in the room. And cause it was the largest room. So I went to the room and there was no place to sit except on the bed with my husband. And I'm like, okay, fine. I plopped down on the bed. He says, give me your feet. (laughs) Yes. I even said, I'm throwing away all my clothes and packing you in my suitcase. (laughs) Oh, Oh, that's so neat. I love that. And as we're talking, I was like, I remember saying, like years before, maybe 10 years before my next husband's going to be a chiropractor. Huh? And my husband is, he goes, I am never getting married again. And I stopped, checked in with my intuition and said, I am. <laughs> and we've just celebrated seven years. Of marriage. Oh, that's so great. So go now go to the um, teenage book. Cause I am super interested in that too. How okay. did that come? So you have three children. I've got four, four. Okay. Um, the third, the one that I learned the, with the gratitude, I taught her yes. that she was a little bit difficult. <laughs> <laughs> she is extremely sensitive and very intuitive. In fact, her whole business is intuition. Oh, cool. And when she was three, she was asking if we were getting divorced. Wow. And I'm like, no, things are fine. But every time we told her that her intuition was wrong, she ended up getting angry. And mm-hmm. so we had a lot of anger in the house and it wasn't the relationship, but she just knew we weren't supposed to be together. Well, it wasn't until she was 14 that we were like, all right, we're calling it quits. And it, we did not fight. It just wasn't working for us. Right. And So she's extremely, extremely sensitive, but through this time, it was very difficult to handle. And then 
add on to that all of the normal teenage stuff, and then add on to that the other kids and their normal stuff. And it's the book is very focused on the principles and how you live your life. And you're going to be high vibe no matter what. And oh, yes, by the way, the teenager is going to do what they're going to do. Right. You, you've spent the first 13, 14 years teaching your kid what to do. Right. And, you know, brainwashing them with whatever you want to brainwash wash them with. When they hit their teenage years, it's their time to go, hey, does this work for me? Mm -hmm. And there's a little bit of experimenting going on. Right. If you give your kid the chance to experiment and you give your kid the chance to make some mistakes while they're home, mm -hmm. it's a much smoother transition into adulthood. Right. Tell, so so you let help. them, you did, I'm sorry, what? what did you you're say? there to help them. Right. Um, you know, I was listening to something about, you know, when they're in 10th grade, you, you know, the road doesn't have the, the side rails, you know, you kind of like, you know, every year as in high school, it kind of gets the road widens, right? right. And you allow them to do certain things. And, you know, I look back at, um, you know, my high school days, and it was completely different than, you know, our generations are so different, you know, raising right. girls in this generation is a completely different ball game. And, you know, it's like, I think just because I was such a conscious parent, mm -hmm. you know, I haven't experienced, I mean, knock on wood, but I, I've really, I feel like, thank you, God, that I have these girls that know, uh, their tools, have their tools really concrete. Right. So we, it's pretty amazing. But when I have my kids in this raising confidence class, I was telling you about, you know, yeah, I see these 14 year olds are struggling and trying to find, you know, like, I don't believe in my mom. I don't want to go there. I want, I mean, even to the point of emancipation where I was like, wait, what? I don't even know what that word would come out of your mouth, but you know, you come to where I get like these teenagers, you know, are like, wait, I can, you know, I see it all the time in the carpool. Like Paige doesn't really know what to, she's like, well, it, it's just interesting watching you know, where the teenage mind is going. So yes, I would rather you learn she, the first day she gets to ninth grade coming from a pr little private, um, Christian school, mom, girls swear. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh dear, that's why we moved you to that high school. <laughs> so there's a lot more things that we're going to learn together while you're with me, you oh, know, yeah. before <laughs> But anyway, sorry to interrupt you, but it just, you know, it's like, it makes you realize like how, first of all, how different, you know, when we were teenagers versus now and, um, you know, just being a mom and watching the road widen, you know, and being yeah. present and knowing and wanting them to make mistakes and, you know, learning from those and not being the, you know, having the leash on and trying to, you know, guide them and then you know, later on thinking, oh, she's clueless. She doesn't know what to do without me. I don't want that. Right. If you can give your kids the space to make a mistake and then when it didn't work out the way they wanted it to, mm -hmm. to be able to come in and say, how did that work for you? What would you do differently? Instead of, well, I told you it was wrong. Right. You're actually helping to create a thinker. And yes. if someone can critically think and they can learn to follow their intuition, they're going to have a much easier time in life than the kid whose parents always told them, do this, do this, do this, do this. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Right. And I think that might be some of the difference between the kids going to college and going, woohoo, I'm free. Right. And every bad decision out there. Exactly. I always say like you, you hold your kids from doing anything, eating junk food or, you know, all the things that you make sound so bad when the kids are like, Oh, drooling. Can I please have that snicker bar? And the mom never lets them have anything. And then they leave and go find it. You know, it's like, Oh yeah. Just, oh, just let them eat it there. There's or balance. Sneak. Huh? Or sneak it. Oh yeah. They'll sneak it for sure. <laughs> anyway. So the book is about and you were inspired to write it because of what you went through with that one daughter mainly and how right. you saw what, even with the other three, right? Yeah. Yeah. What, tell it, me what your, I what's the basis what of it? 
both of these books are about what worked for me. And I'm like, well, if it's working for me, I'm hoping it works for somebody else. And I've had success with that, where people read the book and go, oh, I should have read this years ago. Right. Know? I actually recommend that Surviving Your Teenager is read before your kid's a teenager, probably starting around age 10, 11, mm -hmm. so that you can practice the skills so that when they get to their teenage years and aliens invade their body, you've got some skills to work with. You're not playing catch up. Yeah. And I, you know, I think of I know, uh, parents there. Yeah. I think it's either black or white. Like you're either completely aware or you're in the clouds. <laughs> and it's like you, I see the kids that are posting things on pages, uh, Instagram. And I'm thinking, does her mom know that she's doing that? Like, I just don't think she's aware, you know, and I just don't, and she knows like, mom, she's going to ruin her life. And she, you know, these are permanent things when people put, don't they know that? And doesn't her mom know, but you know, I just feel like either, don't you think you're either an awareness mom or you are kind of, I don't know what the in-between is. I don't see the in-between. Well, at the same time, you don't know what's going on in the mom's life. Right. And parents are not strictly parents. Right. They're also sons and daughters, and they're also working, and they're also dealing with their own health issues. Mm -hmm. And for myself, I was dealing with headaches. And that really put a blanket on a lot of my awareness mm -hmm. until I learned how to be high vibe, even if I had a headache. Right. Yeah. We don't, yeah. we can't, we don't, we, we are high vibe. And even if you don't feel good, pretend you do, right. That's what we're like, fake it. Right. But if you can fake it with your action and then you can actually fake it with your feelings. Mm -hmm. Like my husband now, he was like, I didn't know you had a headache. I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. Talk about the cells. Cause I was watching a video about, you know, how we, you know, the cells are water and how powerful, you know, our body is made up of some, I mean, what 78, 80% of water and how you can your DNA. I've talked about this a few times on the podcast, but tell me your take on that. Cause I love that. Oh, think of it as taking a shower and you've got, you know, you've got lots and lots of cells, but think of one cell and you take a shower and the cell the water is infused with horrible things it's dirty mm -hmm. so you're taking a shower with mud water and so you've got this cell and you've got this mud water and the cell just sort of shrivels up and is like ew now think of it in terms of the water has love in it and it feels bright and sparkly and it's doing great. And the water is washing the cell and all of a sudden it's like, whoa, yeah. So it depends on what your intention is. If you want to feel horrible, if you want to feel depressed, then infuse the water, infuse your life with all the horrible things that you can. Right. Watch the movie that's depressing. Read the book that has you crying all over the place. Um, walk into the wall. You know? <laughs> well, you oh, would, God. that would be a manifestation event of the feeling that way. <laughs> exactly. But all of these things play in. So just like if the water that you're um, showering with is clean and sparkly and full of joy, now, pay attention to what movie you're watching. Is it feeding that joy or is it feeding the depression? Right. I mean, I, it's, it's the thoughts you think and the words you speak. I always say that, but it's like, it, you can change your life by just those two things and changing the words you, you say out loud and the things you think. That's very good, but don't forget the heart. It's the feeling that- Yes. If you've got- a thought and a feeling, and they're moving in opposite directions, the feeling wins. Totally. Oh my gosh. I teach the girls that. And a feeling, and they're moving in the same direction. You're golden. Yes. I always, we lay, when, 
like the, I always talk about like begin with the end in mind and, you know, feel the feeling of what it feels like when you won that, or when you got that a in that test, or, you know, so we lay there and we in bed and we're t- talking about it. We play whatever we're playing some music that kind of gets us in that feeling that, oh my gosh. And then we get to the moment, the girls are in pageants and I, and it happened, um, this just recently, we, you know, would listen to the song that they play when they're crowned and we'd feel the girl put the crown on her head and we'd put the sash on and we'd like, oh my gosh, can you believe it? Do you hear me screaming in the audience? And we're, you know, (laughs) so we go through this whole feeling thing of, you know, just, and you're, you're like your body, your your soul, your, this body doesn't know the difference. You just tell it what you want to happen. Don't tell it yes, the other yes. thing, you know, feel the feeling that you want to feel because you're telling it to that's what's the coming attraction, right. Of the next thing that's going to happen because you feel it, you're welcoming that. Right. Now the same thing, if you go to the end, when you go, when a producer or a director goes to make a movie mm-hmm. or when the person writing it makes the movie, You've got to know if it's a horror movie, if it's a love story, if it's a documentary, if it's an adventure story. So what are the people going to feel as they watch the movie? And how are they going to feel at that last scene? Right. Now, think about Sleepless in Seattle. I know it's an old movie, but <laughs> the of getting into the elevator and Meg Ryan just looking at him mm-hmm. with that sense of wonder of, wow. Right. That's what the whole movie built up to. Right. So you start with that end feeling mm-hmm. and then fill in the rest. Right. I love that. And it's so, you know, to teach people how to uh, manifest or create, like you'd create dreams. I've I think those are the words you use. And I love that because it is creating dreams and you could, you can create anything, but to understand that, you know, when you look at the cells in your body and, you know, we're, we're, you know, this being that is just vibrating this, you know, it's like almost like a magnet, like, tell me, tell, come at me, you know, like you're, you're attracting, you're where this, these attract, this is what we're attracted. It's an attractive universe. So all these things we can have but to feel it and see it, and know it and ha- say the words and, and it's not hard, you know, that's the fun part of, t- and that's when the magic happens or the light, when the light comes through the, those sweet eyes and they're like, I get it. I know how to do it now. Yes. Now life is, takes on a whole different meaning. Mm-hmm. I love it. What else do you, like when we were, when I was looking at different, you create a bubble, you talk about yeah. like creating a <laughs> bubble. Let's say that you're feeling high vibe and your partner is not. Well, you can complain about the partner and you can lower your vibration by complaining. And oh, by the way, if you lower your vibration, then you're more possibility that you're going to get sick. Or you can stay at this high vibe and actually imagine a bubble of love around the other person. You're not forcing them to step into it, but you're providing the energy so that they can touch it and go, oh yeah, that feels good. That's what I want. And you create this bubble of whatever you want. You can do it with a person. You can do it. Your daughters can do it with a term paper. You get this paper in front of you, you know, imaginary, and you imagine it done. And you put this love all around it and you just do and move your hands. I'm very kinesthetic. You move (laughs) your hands and you just imagine what it is. And then you go, wow. You send it off into the universe. Oh, I love that. It can work the same way with an illness. It can work the same way with a job. It can work with anything. And it, what you're doing initially is raising your vibe, keeping your vibe high, and then projecting out to whatever it is you want to affect the energy of what you want. You just happen to be doing it with a bubble. Hmm. Oh, that's so cool. I love that. Well, you know, you think of, you know, think I was, I started the interview 
or the intro with like, when I meet people like you, we have this like-minded, you know, I love talking. This stuff is like, I could talk to you all day, but when you learn, when I love learning those little tools that I can take, you know, and use with my girls or my people. Um, and you know, when you, when you come up with those and you start to see people, like I was watching your YouTube video and how like the lady was like, oh, she wanted to have her family all together, happy on the table and, you know, being together and you were like moving your hands and you're all together because they weren't like they lived far away and she wanted everyone to be at a table together. But when you, what you taught me was, you know, see it and you're so kind of, you're, you're moving your hands and the energy probably because you're, you're an energy healer. Right. right. That's right. inside of you. So I'm watching you move your hands and the energy and like, she's picturing her family all coming together at this table. And I was like, oh my gosh, you could do that with anything. You know, you just, yes. Oh, just like the bubble. Yeah. But what other things do you do? Like what other fun tools that you use? Oh, I've that- got a million of them. <laughs> <laughs> Name one before we're wrapping up. What is one that you love that you've really seen a transformation? I love the magic doors. Oh, fun. Tell me. You know, the game show where you behind door number one, behind door number two. Price is right. Right. (laughs) You can have three magic doors. You can have a thousand magic doors. You can have an infinite number of magic doors. What you're going for is which magic door has the desire that you truly have. Okay. And so if your desire is to burst out into this world and help people and you want to create a vibrant society, you don't have to define that as, well, I can only do it as this. Right. So imagine all of these doors. Now, this vibrancy and the society that's working and the people that are getting it and creating lives that work, and it's so wonderful and so wonderful, build the feeling up inside of yourself, which doors, because there are probably more than one, have that feeling behind them. Well, there's one, there's one, there's one, there, 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 there. Well, that one's down a hallway, down a little bit back. Yeah, there it is. And you just let your imagination fly. Now, all of these doors pull into you. Hmm. Now, all of these possibilities come to you. Now you just have to be willing to receive them. Right. And so when you say magic door, which ones am I putting different thoughts in each one? Or am I just pretending you are looking for the energy space that matches the intention that you set. Got it. And at first it's like, I don't know. I don't see any doors. I don't know what you're talking about. But if you say, where's that door? Your eyes go there up to the left, down to the right, wherever it goes. And you go, okay, there's a door. Where's another one? Oh, it's above me. Okay. Yeah. That's coming in. Notice what you notice. And if your head whips to the left, it's on the left. If your head whips to the right, it's on the right. Huh? Oh, I thought that's so cool. I never heard that. Did you make that up? Oh, it's a variation of what um, Richard Bartlett does in matrix energetics. Mm -hmm. He talks about windows where you can open a window. Right. But I like the game show idea. Yeah, me too. I was right there (laughs) on Price is Right. (laughs) What, what, who do you like? Do you have all those books? Who are your, like good, like the, if you're going to give a book to a friend, what would you give somebody? What's one of your favorite books? Oh, they're so good. It depends what the friend wants. Right. If you want a sciencey book, Richard mm-hmm. Bartlett, Physics of Miracles, great. If you want something that is a little bit more, you know, just on the mind stuff, mm-hmm. then I think it's Murphy. Joseph Murphy. Yeah. Yes. I love that book. <laughs> I, I was reading your mind. Joseph Murphy, The Power. Or this one, Amanda Francis. Rich oh, book. Yeah. Oh, how funny. Really? I think, yeah, someone told me that book. She's wonderful. Um, Got a lot of things. And you can buy a book. It can sit on your shelf for 10 years. You never look at it. But the energy of the book is seeping into the room and seeping into your experience. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, wow, I need that book today. 
Mm -hmm. And you pull out the book and you open it up and you're like, wow, this was exactly what I needed. There's no reason that we have to read books from first to last page. Right. No, I believe me, even though don't say that to my girls. (laughs) (laughs) And no, you're not absorbing that book when it's just sitting on your shelf, right? No, you have to read it. Information. But right. you're absorbing the energy. Yes, I love that. I, you know, do you ever read Neville God- Goddard? I love Neville yeah, Goddard. That, well, it reminded me because I do that all the time with his book. It's it's in the kitchen and I'll just look at it in the morning. I'm like, oh, I want to open that book because it's anything it ever comes is like perfect. Thank you. Um, so I use that one a lot. And I my first book that I um would hand out to everybody is The Game of Life and How to Play It. Did yes. you ever read? Yeah. So that mm-hmm. was like my first. And then I would read all of them and I'd get the one with all four of her books in one. And that kind of started on my, you know, your word is your wand. You know, I, all those books I love. Anyway, I love books <laughs> and the I love first, your books. Um, the daughter that was having a hard time. Mm-hmm. She was 14. We were on vacation and she stayed out all night at some boy's room and I was not happy. <laughs> And I'm like, you are now grounded for life. Right. Well, it turns out that she had a mono and it was so bad that she ended up in the hospital. Oh, geez. So I'm like, all right, you're already grounded. I can't, you know, this is sort of bigger than grounding. Right. So your punishment is that we're going to read the four agreements together. Ah. And so we sat and read them and talked about them and- it yes. wasn't much of a punishment, but no, <laughs> she so to point across that things had to change. Yes. Yeah, see, this is how powerful. Yes. yes. My four agreements, but that is part of my course. I teach a week of the four agreements because I remember reading that when I was, you know, in my thirties, when it came out and I'm like, when I have kids, I am going to have, we're going to read this book front and back, back to front. This is like the best, the four easiest understanding um, agreements to live your life by. I'm all about that book. Right. Now, just to back it up a little bit, look at what just happened. I had the inspired thought to talk about this, this particular story about this particular book. And it actually meant something to you. Yes. Right. And it's right next to me. When you said that, I go, oh my gosh, see, exactly. I love it. Magic. Magic. magic moment like my mark archangel michael the other day it's like i love it that's how life is all full of magic i'm t- we have come to the hour and i'm taking almost all of the hour up with you it's been so fun what is uh your you have your website yes with joy.com yes with joy.com you have a uh, if, work if you go to judithjoy.com it's the same one <laughs> okay And then you have a workshop coming up. I was reading on the website. I do. It's a three-part workshop, three consecutive Wednesdays, starting on September 22nd. It's virtual. I'm only accepting about 10 people, so we can keep it small and intimate. The first goes over the four um, steps in the process. The second two are actually group coaching. So as I'm coaching one person, everybody else gets a chance to go, oh, I didn't think about that question. Yeah. There's always something, right? Yeah. And then we'll work through it all so that you can actually leave the workshop going, okay, yeah, this dream is a reality. I can do this. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Isn't that fun? Don't you love watching them? You can sign up for my workshop on the website. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Social media and all that other stuff. Yes. And it's all where Instagram and Facebook, Judith, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Okay. So just Judith joy. Actually, I went with yes, with Judith joy. Oh, cute. I love that. You're amazing. So fun to talk to you. you. Thank you so much for doing this podcast and helping so many people. Oh, you're welcome. I love it. It's my passion right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you.